Today, we're gonna to talk about compute modules. I know the name sounds very innocuous, but it's actually one of my favorite new features. It allows you to bring your existing code bases, no matter the language, run it inside the secure enclave that is AIP. And so you can bring in your own machine learning models, your own optimizer, third-party ones you've bought, actually running inside the platform as part of your AI-driven workflows. All right, let's take a look. All right, this is a field service rep demo. And so how does that fit in with compute modules? Well, this is a really complex problem. I have tons of different clients that uh, live all across the different metro area here. I have a bunch of different field service reps and they have equipment, different skills, times, traffic, um, and things are constantly changing. People get sick, things break down, things take longer than expected. How do I manage that at scale in the most optimal way, right? So maybe I have a um, optimizer that I built or I go get an open source one or I buy a third party optimizer, right? So that's cool. So in this example, we're actually gonna take a third party optimizer. So we've partnered with Timefold. And so Timefold is actually a provider of different optimization models. They have a great one for field service teams here that we've actually integrated with different customers. So where does compute modules come in? So I've got a third party tool I wanna to run as part of this overarching ecosystem in AIP. That's where compute modules come in. So compute module is a serverless Docker runtime that allows you to horizontally scale up and down as needed based on demand. There's lots of different ways you can use it with um, having different functions for like what we're gonna see today. You can integrate for pipelines for custom transformations. Lots of really cool stuff there. You can even create your own client. Um, you can even integrate into your Docker image OSDK, writing back to the ontology straight from inside your Docker container. Lots of different cool architecture stuff. Today, we're just gonna focus on taking the third party tool and integrate it into this overarching ecosystem. All right, so if you look here, this is actually the logs from the container that's actually running right now. I've got just one replica for this demo here, but the cool thing is I actually have the functions. The functions are actually registered in the ontology. So when we talk about data, logic, and actions of the ontology, this is the logic piece. So I'm now getting a third party source of logic that's optimizing my field service rep team integrated into the flow right here. That's pretty cool. So these functions are there. So now no matter if I'm building on top of this with like a workshop application or OSDK, a custom app, or I'm integrating back my pipelines, the cool thing is it's all using these same functions running in compute modules backed by, in this case, Timefold. That's pretty cool. So you can see in the configuration here, there's lots of different stuff. You can go read the docs to kind of dig through this here. Um, but in here in this container, you can see I can set up and configure based on environment variables, different arguments and mounting things. Um, right in here, I can also configure if I want GPUs. So if I want to host a machine learning model that needs some GPUs, I can also do that in here. It's very versatile across your platform. This is how you bring your existing assets or third party assets right where the AI is happening inside of AIP. All right, so now we understand what compute modules are. Let's see it in action. So if we actually take a look here in the field service rep app, um, we can also click on optimize. So in here, I can actually hit manage field service routing and hit start, start solve. Um, and as we do that, there's some different configuration things around thread counts. Um, I also can have some model override pieces here. So let's click on this and so you can see this. These are different weightings, different parameters of the model um, that I can configure. I'm just gonna pick the defaults for this run now. And then the last one, we're actually gonna hit submit over the different time range that we want it to run over. So we've put all this together. This is gonna take the data from the ontology. It's gonna pass it into the ontology function that then hits the compute module, right? So as I'm doing this, I'm actually creating a job. So I've already got, there's already one out there running. I've got another one that's just not solving yet. So if we actually go look over at the compute module itself, I've got logs actually running right here. So I can actually see the job result happening. So it's actually solve or running, it's created a new job. Um, and so as things are going, it's actually gonna give me updated. I can go see what's happening inside the container. If we come back over here, you can see we've got a couple of them in action here. I've got one solver job. So when we look at the convergence monitor, the more negative score, that's the penalty, that's bad. As the, as the negative penalty gets less, that's good. I have a more optimal plan. And so you can see here like on the soft scores. So those are things like uh, my preferences of when I like to work or what areas I like to work in, right? So then, hey, let's optimize to have that so we have a good quality life for our employees. That's great. Now the BDM score might be something uh, more like, hey, I have to have these skills or uh, based on the routing, I only have this much time. There can be even other things like hard values, like I don't have the skill to work on this piece of equipment. I can't send this technician, right? 
So you can optimize across these different areas and try to create the holistic optimized plan across your whole business. So these, you can see as these run, we've got a couple different running in parallel right now. This is the one we had just started. You can see as that converges over time until we've met the kind of end objective function or time bounding, right? So it's gonna keep running. That's actually happening in the compute module. That's pretty cool. All right, so once that finishes, then it gives us a couple of different things. We can figure out what the best solution is. Uh, we can then also overlay different driving routes on there based on traffic and other stuff. And then understand the score of like, how did I actually end up overall for my employees, my, my essentially the uh, cost of running this plan. So you can actually analyze all of that. All right, it's great that we created this overall optimized plan, but as we know, things happen, right? So if we come back in here and adjust, so let's say we had a vehicle go down, and in this case, I think I already entered one in here for vehicle three. So we have the van that's gonna be down from these dates. So that's gonna cause a disruption to the plan I had just created, right? So things happen, how do we react? Now, the cool thing about AIP and Foundry is we actually can create simulations and scenarios, and these scenarios allow me to actually test out things before I make them the new ground truth. So if I come in here and create the scenario, Let's say Gus Jones is assigned to vehicle three today, but it's gonna be down to the time of his visit. So I can actually have it look for the new optimal plan of like, where should we reassign Gus Jones to? So it's actually gonna run the same thing on the compute module in the back end, understanding in the subset of like how we should reassign right now so that we don't have disruption to our customers and we have the right tech assigned with the right skills, right? So on the back end, that's how compute modules now here in lots of different ways gets consumed and I'm actually rerouting, showing the different new routes. And now me as the scheduler, I can understand, yep, this is what I want to go do. This is AI and human working together. All right, this is really cool to be able to see how compute modules, along with different optimizers and tools, can actually then back different pieces throughout this application, helping me create these longer term optimized plans, but also when there's disruptions. So you can also see that there's other ways we might integrate this. Compute modules is very, very versatile from that aspect. So now that same compute modules I have, different optimization algorithms running in there, I can reuse it for things like, in this example, nurse scheduling. So I've got a bunch of nurses that need to be scheduled. They have skill sets, preferences, when they're available, unavailable. So we actually had to go solve 99 or 100 different uh, shifts and actually can apply these results here. And it's gonna show you the before and after of a scheduled shift. So let's zoom out so you can kind of see this. This is pretty cool. And boom, all right, that's pretty cool. So now you can see automatically scheduling out, making sure we respect everyone's preferred and unavailable times, also understanding their skill sets and what our patient needs, all automatically using the compute modules, optimizing on the back end. I hope you liked the compute modules demo today. It's a pretty simplistic example, but to show you that you can bring third party, your own code basis applications, code for transforms and pipelines, all this is possible with compute modules. The real idea here is how do I get quicker time to value by bringing these things that, that already exist in your business and accelerating your generative AI workflows with your existing code bases. This is all done with AIP.